be called, used to be called then the Westminster's Passenger Transport Executive in Birmingham, which at that time were dealing with not just buses, with trains, but also with new generations of trams as such. When I went freelance, our ex-finance director, Phil Evans, decided he would go freelance as well and set up his own company, which is a company called Pre-Metro, to actually develop and operate what they call kinetic energy trams. Somebody somewhere said, well, a flywheel. That's a sort of flywheel, and it generates energy. So why don't we try and use a flywheel to propel our vehicles? And if you generate a flywheel, even an internal combustion engine has got a flywheel, a flywheel between the gearbox and the engine itself. So, given the fact that somewhere up in the depths of the black country, our notable governments have destroyed most of the industry, some people got together in a pub one day and said, well, right, let's develop something which works off a flywheel that goes round and round and round and generates electricity. So once it's started, it goes round and round and round and round and round. That's it. So that's what they did. But the major drawback was a flywheel, as in any wheels, goes that way. So somehow they had to develop the technique of transferring the flywheel from doing that <coughs> to doing that. And that was the technological breakthrough for the kinetic energy tram. And the kinetic energy tram is operating successfully today up in the West Midlands. Two prototypes have been there doing wonders, just up and down the Starbridge branch, but doing absolute wonders. It rests on the simple but effective engineering device, the flywheel. So the rotating flywheel is a store of kinetic energy that is used to power the vehicle. That's it. Goes round and round and round and powers the vehicle. And the typical flywheel is made of steel laminates, as such. And the flywheel allows the direct capture of the moving, the braking of the, of the tram. So the power of the braking of the tram goes back into the flywheel. But there is one drawback, and that is, how do you start the flywheel? Exactly the same as you start a lawnmower. If anybody started a lawnmower, you'd go, run, run, until it fires up. So, this particular type of tram, which operates in the West Midlands, does rely on a small little two-litre, what I call a donkey engine, works off LPG gas. Because once that flywheel starts to slow down as you come to a particular stop, obviously it's losing momentum, therefore it's losing power, so it's got to be regenerated. So this little donkey engine can actually regenerate the flywheel. Now, you don't necessarily need the two-litre engine because all the flywheel needs is that particular oomph, that particular boost. Continental systems, of which there are quite a number, rely on the tram coming along to a particular stop. A little pantograph will go up from the roof and it will make a connection with an electrical circuit, an electrical supply. And a fast charge of the electrical supply will enable it to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So, there's various ways that you can charge the flywheel. But even if it's a two-liter LPG engine, or whether it's supplied off a mains overhead electric, it is, in actual fact, a very efficient and green, green, for want of a better word, um, means of transport, particularly particularly, and I emphasize this, in 
an urban situation where you've got a relatively flat landscape. Here in Hereford, you have all the qualities related to that. Not only that, you have the qualities of an existing X railway line that you could put this on, you could put it on within six months because the other factor involved with kinetic energy trams is you don't need, it's not a railway, it's a tramway. So you don't need to actually put the track down like you would lay a railway line. No sleepers, no ballast, need reasonably good drainage, but what happens is because they are lightweight vehicles, less than the weight of a double-decker bus as such, you have the concept of what they call carpet track. Carpet track comes in sections, just like a model railway. You bring it along, you put it down, you have your base there, the rail and the surface is flush, and the tram just goes along it, back and forth and back and forth. If you want to change it, you take a bit of it up and you put it somewhere else. It's like a little model railway to some degree. So all the infrastructure costs involved in putting trams like this have come down in cost considerably, quite, quite considerably. So compared to other means of transport, heavy tram, heavy rail, you have a very viable transport project that could be used in a situation like Perryford itself. But that is not the only part of it, because a tram will only go where you've got the formation. It can go elsewhere, it can bend around corners, it can go through high town if you want to, but you know, that depends on whether people want it to go through high town or whether you want to stay as it is. The other fact is that parts of the city are not suitable for trams in Hereford. So you develop what is effectively a network, and it's an electric network, which leads on to the next subject as such. And it's a project which I'm working on at the moment in conjunction with... You've seen those sort of buses rolling around Herefordshire. Yeomans have got a fleet of them. They pump out diesel fumes, ad infinitum. Optair have gone one stage further. They've now developed a fully electric version. A fully electric version, not a hybrid, a fully electric version bus. Which has a sort of, I think the range is something like four hours constant in operation before a recharge. But again, <coughs> when you come to the recharge, and you think to yourself, well, right, okay, the thing's got to go back to the depot, it's got to be plugged in, and it's got to be charged for 6 to 12 hours or whatever the, whatever the charge is. They have also developed a technique for what they call fast charge. So in effect, the bus comes along, it comes to the terminus, or selected stops. As it comes into the terminus, it gets automatically plugged in to, again, a fast charge zap, which allows it another six to eight hours continuous use. That, with a tram in the Hereford situation, could make Hereford, in effect, the first city in Britain, the first city in Europe, to go 100% green public transport in terms of a city solution. That there, you can't read the side of it, but on the side of it, it says, Orkney's electric future. Orkney have just gone 100% electric with their public transport system. That's an island somewhere right in the, up there somewhere. <laughs> huh? So why not Hereford? Why not Hereford? The willpower is there, the technology is there, the political will 
possibly not there. We can get both a cycleway, a segregated cycleway, a segregated walkway, because a lot of the feedback that we're getting back on that is two things, right? One is the safety aspect of the Great Western Way. People don't like walking down there. People don't like going down there because it's insecure. A tramway along there would make it 100% secure, lit throughout yeah. with CCTV cameras connected into the tramway control center. We would also have a segregated... The other, the other point that was made, quite interestingly, is that people don't walk down there because of cyclists. Oh. So, you need, so you need a certain amount of segregation even between mm. pedestrians and cyclists. But the fact of the matter is that you can put the tramway system in there because the tram itself, the tramway system relies, it doesn't use a signaling system. It uses what they call a line of sight. So it's a single line with frequent passing places. So where you get the passing places is where, first of all, cyclists and pedestrians can cross the track, yeah. right? which is in the sort of frequency could be less than the, the width, less than the length of this building, really. You know, you can put in as many as you want to, right? But secondly, is the fact that because of that, you can, in actual fact, therefore, afford to put in a segregated cycleway and footpath. So you can accommodate the three along there without any problem at all. And, and I haven't got them here, but we have done sort of sectional plans on the way that would particularly operate. Okay. So, now that, that it's, it's one of the main things that came across in the various sort of um, talks, consultations that we've done on putting a tramway down, mm -hmm. the, West, down, down the Great Western. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of the things that has also been taken aboard by other tramway systems that have been put in in, in the country using old railway formations. Yeah. It's a far, insofar as, you know, don't forget, you can't ignore the fact that other people want to use that particular formation. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have a three, a three, cyclists, pedestrians, and the trams. And the fact that you've got trams going up and down there at regular frequencies is increases the, uh, the, you know, improves the safety involved, involved, involved in it. Uh, the Great Western Way obviously uh, has been, from what we've studied, has been sort of chosen uh, simply because you've already got the right of way yeah. on one of the major corridors into town, complete with river crossing. Yeah. And it's also as you can appreciate, one of the major factors involved in any putting forward any transport stream, as the council are finding out, because they've been trying to persuade themselves to go for CPOs today, is land acquisition. You know, you've got to have the land before you can put it in there. That particular corridor, yeah. much to their chagrin, is actually owned by them and maintained by them, including the River Bridge. Yeah. So, you know, why not? We went for the full circuit, which was, which basically was using a lot of the old railway lines around Hereford, which basically was a circuit, a circuit around around Hereford, I said, in various phases. Obviously, the Great Western Way was the was the first phase, which then went across. Uh, across the White Cross Road into the pickup where the Bulmer siding is, mm. or the ex Bulmer siding, which would then take you around to the railway station mm. uh, and the railway station for the hospital as yeah. such. Uh, on, the, on the southern side, you can, you can, in actual fact, without too much difficulty, where you've got the Red Hill terminus dive under the existing railway line and run at a lower level. Mm at the other side, on the outer town side, to take it down to Rotherwest. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the key to that particular extension was the fact that you've got this enterprise zone in, in Rotherwest. Mm, yeah. And, you know, how do you get the people, why, you know, why not put a tram in there? Why not put a state-of-the-art 21st century thing into an enterprise zone, which is meant to be a 21st century, mm. high technology, state-of-the-art, do-all, everything sort of thing. Mm. The section then from Rotherwest
coming back round to the railway station, in effect, is perhaps the most difficult. But you can, what you can do, you don't use the railway line because that sort of vehicle, the tram and conventional train, don't mix. Yes. You can't. Yeah. Not in, not in any way could you put them. You know, yes. otherwise you'd have little trams being chased by sort of thousand-ton freight trains yes. up the line. You know, yes. yeah. you, you can see the sort of well, that's the more the comic, the comic side and side of it as such. But what 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 you've got there is. You do have an element of a swathe of land which runs alongside the railway line yeah. right away up to the hospital, which you could use. Crossing the river is not a particular problem because on the existing the existing bridge over the railway, that's down um, where the sewerage works, yeah. is down that end of the end of the town there. It's very easy, which has been done elsewhere, and that is because they're such lightweight vehicles, you just put a cantilever out. Yeah. If, if the railways will let you do it, but they refuse Sustrans permission when we put, put in the cycle path there. That's why I thought it was a separate new bridge. But originally Sustrans wanted to do it, can't well, leave it out from yeah. the railway yeah. line, but yeah. bridge yeah. rail would be proper. Uh, or rail track. Rail track, put it, put it, put, put it, as, put it as rail track, I'd say. Uh, that's very much into, that's a very much in, into the future sort of situation. Yeah. In what could be a decade or so, I forecast that a lot will have changed in this country. A lot when it comes to transport policy will have changed in this country because partly because partly because of our exit from Europe. And we're going to have to do some serious thinking about where we're going with, 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 with transport in this country.